seven stars connect to form a world. Using magic as a medium to bless the world. To subvert life, one must explore the unknown miracle. Starting with a clue about revival magic, the legendary story of a group of travelers begins. Sword and magic slash dragons and dungeons slash soul world slash warcraft aliens Falun novel network reminds you that this novel and its characters are purely fictional. If there are any similarities, they are purely coincidental and should not be imitated. Prologue You are listening at novelfull.audio On a magical continent called Azaphasia, one can look up and see several huge moons of different colors, all of which are pierced by a huge metal tower and connected to each other. At any time, the scenery of the land of Azaphasia will not change and will continue to hold on to the darkness of the eternal night. Someone once explained this phenomenon with a few words of mythology. However, the most convincing one is still the legend about Titan's wrath. It is said that the prototype of the metal tower was originally a spear, which was a divine punishment dropped by the angry Titan. He not only pierced these planets with his spear, but also maliciously cursed them, causing their life to remain dark in this dark night for a lifetime. These false myths did not scare those explorers, as people continued to explore the miraculous world of Azerosha with their imaginative ideas and hopeful curiosity. Under the relentless exploration of people, many unknown places have been developed, and various beautiful, novel, and unseen magical species have gradually begun to emerge. Beautiful and fragrant flowers, fresh fruits with fascinating flavors, and a variety of small animals with various postures and postures, all of which are publicly announced in batches. But the beauty before us only ends here. Not all that exploration brings are good things, and more dangers that should not be present are also released by them. The continent of Ezephalsia had a civilization before it was inhabited, and the exposure of explorers exposed ancient tombs, secret territories, and relics deep in caves that had been shrouded in dust for countless years to the world. Taking advantage of this opportunity, the powerful resentment and curse that should have been sealed suddenly overflowed, contaminating and eroding the pure land of Azaphasia again. Disaster also struck the first star on which people relied for survival at this time. At a time of despair and panic, a human hero stepped forward. He picked up a large knife, put on armor to confront and crush the impact of the disaster beast. He looked so majestic and sacred in the crowd, as if he had received the blessing of light at that moment. Even if the hero wins this victory, it does not mean that the crisis is lifted. Those crazy exotic monsters will make a comeback, and at that time, people in the world will have no chance of survival. In order to contain the development of the situation, the human hero disregarded danger and embarked on a journey to find an end to the root of the disaster. He entered a high tower that reached the sky and successfully brought back the blessed magical seed from the second star. The seed of magic was held in the hero's palm and came to everyone. The seed, with its brilliant light, dispelled all the darkness around it. It was a light that no one had ever seen before, so soft and dazzling. Just seeing it made everyone feel warm. The seed of magic was buried deep underground under the eye. Catching witness of everyone. It absorbed the corrupt energy of this world and quickly broke through the ground, growing into a golden holy tree with abundant branches and leaves in an instant, and successfully dispelled the black mist called disaster. The hero was revered by everyone as the first king, and a royal city was built around this golden tree to defend and protect this miracle. The world thus ushered in a brief period of peace, but the good times did not last long. The blessing magic of the golden holy tree, an indiscriminate blessing, almost envelopes everyone, and those who obtain magical protection through blessing have long forgotten the original intention of using power. Perhaps it is to satisfy personal desires, or because of a desire for power. So much so that in the end, various strange religions based on blood, death, and curses even emerged in Azerosha, and a new round of power struggle quickly began. After the death of the hero king, People's exploration of new stars also stopped here. No one knows how the first king ascended to the second star. With his death, this secret was brought to the grave, 
and people no longer had the ability to touch other stars at an unattainable height. But at this moment, a traveler appeared, searching for forbidden magic that could resurrect the dead. Along the way, he gathered many friends and companions, all of whom had their own reasons to move forward in this chaotic world. However, fate guided them step by step to come together and explore places outside the world together. Qingming outing and happy reading. Charge 100 and get 500 VIP coupons. Immediate recharge, activity period. April 4th to April 6th. Chapter 1. Sad Bed Bug. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. The heavy snow drifted down like goose feathers, and the icy north wind mixed with a piercing chill swept across the land of Azarosha. On the streets of Andywell City, far away from the royal city, Law walked empty-eyed on the icy road. He turned a corner and pushed the door into a tavern alone. Still the same, a big glass of black thistle honey wine. Add half a piece of drunken fruit inside. As soon as Lal entered the room, he walked towards the bar and initiated his request towards the tavern owner. The tavern owner heard the sound and saw that it was Rawl. His beard also trembled, but he didn't pour him a drink. Instead, he said somewhat impolitely, I welcome everyone to my tavern to drink, but except for you. Veteran Rawl. After speaking, the tavern owner continued to wipe his glass, seemingly ignoring this guy. Seeing the attitude of the tavern owner, he immediately became a bit angry and grumbled in displeasure, I'm not refusing to pay you the wine money I owe here. After all, I've been drinking at this tavern for over a decade. Lars' voice was neither loud nor small, just right for the tavern owner to hear. But the tavern owner seems to have seen so many of these guests that he doesn't even want to argue with Lal, he doesn't even look at him, and continues to work hard. Seeing that the tavern owner ignored him, Lal sat in the tavern for a while, feeling bored before leaving uninteresting. Not long after he left the tavern, a group of ferocious people stormed into the tavern, shouting loudly and calling out Rawl's name, as if they would never give up until they found him. It's not uncommon for debt collectors to find a tavern, what's rare is that so many debt collectors were sent out at once. The guests in the tavern began to discuss, and those who had some knowledge of Lal's deeds naturally became the one with the most say at the table. How much did that guy Lal borrow from Wissun? Those debt collectors are looking for him every day. Hey, don't you know? A while ago, I thought that guy made a lot of money by taking out some underground palace. That's a big spender. He even spent a lot of money to buy Mrs. Will's red house in the upper city area for several consecutive days. Oh my goodness. I dare not even touch the high.end prostitutes over there. The price of ordering them once is enough for me to drink in a tavern for a month. Yeah. That guy is really losing his heart and going crazy. No normal person would borrow money to be cool. You didn't see him, he would have even drawn a Mercedes back then. Crazy, really crazy. Smoking that thing is like burning money. Ten silver coins is only a small box, isn't that lighting a fire and turning money into smoke? Listening to the guests' conversation, the tavern owner couldn't bear to watch anymore. He couldn't let these people act recklessly here. His tavern still needs to do business. Seeing these people walking back and forth in the room, the tavern owner spoke displeased, don't make trouble here. The bastard you're looking for has just left here, maybe you can still find him if you go and chase him now. The tavern owner saw that the group of people were looking at him, but he still said calmly, Lar is just a scoundrel. My tavern has refused to provide him with drinks from now on. So you guys don't want to cause trouble with me anymore. Last time you smashed something in my tavern, I haven't even reached out to your boss, Wiss Sun, for compensation. Those debt collectors looked at the imposing tavern owner and felt guilty. After flirting with each other, they left without saying a word. Lar has no money on him, no family, no place to live, and even no alcohol. He rarely has such a clear mind. He has been using alcohol to numb his nerves all along, lying on the knee of a beautiful woman drunk and confused all day, at least not thinking about anything, 
and unable to remember anything. But now the situation is very different from before, he can clearly feel the coolness brought by the cold winter. He was wearing a single coat, and through the heavy snowfall falling in front of him, even his breath could bring up waves of white smoke. Looking at the various people on the streets of the city, a wave of sadness surged in my heart. He remembered his past, his beloved wife, and his proud son. Remembering the day when they lost them. At this moment, Lal couldn't find the meaning of his life anymore. He has worked hard to live until now, but has become a bug being chased and driven away everywhere. He hates himself, hates his incompetence, and hates himself for not being able to change this outcome. He was controlled by his sad emotions and didn't know where his leg had taken him. He passed several markets in confusion and was tired from walking. Rawl regained his senses, stopped his steps, and looked at the foul-smelling garbage pile near the entrance of the slum sewer. Without hesitation, he lay down inside. Completely disregarding the unpleasant smell, while still self-deprecating in his heart. Garbage should be thrown into the garbage dump. Ha 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 Rawl himself didn't know what he was happy about, but this environment away from the hustle and bustle was indeed what he needed at the moment. He wanted to be quiet and quiet. Lying in the garbage dump, he looked up at the grey sky and unconsciously looked at the light and varied snowflakes, feeling the icy sensation of melting when they fell on him. Gradually, Lal also began to calm down. Maybe it's not bad to die like this Lal thought this way and slowly closed his eyes, waiting for his body temperature to gradually cool down. But at this moment, a group of white-clad believers wearing heart-fire emblems disrupted this tranquility. They were discussing some undisclosed secrets as they walked. These people were very vigilant and looked around, then stopped at the entrance of the sewer in the civilian cave. One of the leading members of the heart-fire cult spoke up first, I'm reiterating that as soon as we see Hutton, we will immediately control him. Do you understand? This mouse often explores various ruins and tombs, so its escape skills are top-dot-notch. If given the chance, it will be difficult for us to find him again. After the Heartfire attendant finished explaining, another fellow Heartfire believer asked, Master, is the news accurate this time? The magic that can revive the deceased is not some kind of curse magic, is it? The believer, known as the mentor, glanced at the member of the Heart Fire Church in front of him and saw that his badge was a new member of a flame. He patiently explained. You must believe in the guidance of the fire of the soul. The bishop is one of the people who received magic with the hero king, and she possesses the supreme blessing of the flame of the soul. Therefore, as for that dirty and vicious curse magic, it has never been the goal pursued by our church. We believe in the power of the holy light. It is the fiery flame of the soul. The new member of the Heart Fire sect also looked guilty upon hearing this and immediately apologized, I'm sorry, mentor. I feel ashamed of the shaking and questioning of my beliefs. Please punish me. Upon seeing the performance of his followers, the Heart Fire master nodded with satisfaction and touched the forehead of the Protestant, saying, On behalf of the Heart Fire, I forgive you. Please improve your teachings of asceticism in the future and lead more people out of pain and confusion. These heartfelt believers walked into the slums in gratitude for their heartfelt kindness. This group of people didn't notice that Lal, who was lying in the garbage dump waiting to die, listened to everything they said. Qing Ming outing and happy reading. Charge 100 and get 500 VIP coupons. Immediate recharge, activity period. April 4th to April 6th. Chapter 2. Self-Redemption. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. As night falls, on this cold winter day, the people on the street have already returned to their homes, sitting in front of the warm fireplace, eating fruits, and chatting with their families, or reading their favorite books to pass the time. Apart from scattered drunkards and homeless beggars, there are only patrolling guards on the street, which may occasionally appear in certain parts of the city. At this moment, Lal sneaked into a large courtyard under the cover of night. A quaint yet slightly imposing mansion that used to be his home. Rawl was originally the owner of this house, 
but now the ownership of this place belongs to the Wissan Foundation. The reason is simple, unless he can repay the debt, this house can only be used to offset the debt. He didn't come here to reclaim the house, he just came to retrieve some things that were forgotten here. It hasn't been long since his house was taken away by Wiss son after he borrowed money, so this large mansion is still for sale and no one lives there. Rawls' return here is also a familiar journey. He carefully groped under the broken window, flipped over and climbed in. In order to avoid attracting attention, he did not light up the lights, but instead felt the darkness and walked down the hall to the bedroom. Looking at the familiar arrangement and arrangement in the room, Lal's heart still felt a hint of regret. But the disturbance of this emotion only lasted for a moment before being dispelled by him. He has a new goal, he wants to save his family. He is going to search for the magic that can revive the deceased. He wants to save his wife and children. Therefore, Rawl must embark on a journey, he cannot stay in this city for the rest of his life. From now on, I will never live like a bug again. Thinking of this, Rawl's heart reignited with hope. He touched a dark grid under the bedroom bed and vigorously lifted the dusty cover that had been sealed for many years. He faced the smell of decay and took out a large box with mold from the hidden compartment. Under the moonlight, I opened the lock of the box. With a soft bang. Open the box. A full bundle of oily armor and a shiny silver heavy sword appeared before his eyes. My lover and my son are waiting for me, and I, Lal, will definitely bring you back to life. He had never had such determination before, even when he joined the army for the first time when he was young and swore revenge against his comrades, he did not have the same passion as he does now. Because he knew it was a mission, a mission as a husband of a woman who loved him, a mission as a father of his own children. There is no more noble reason than this to guide my lost self today. No matter what outsiders think, at least for this moment he thinks so. Lal looked into the mirror in the bedroom, equipped himself with his old armor and sword, and quietly left here. The next day, the sky was just dawn, and the early morning sky was still filled with cold winter mist. However, Lal was already fully armed and waiting at the entrance of the Explorer's Guild, which had not yet opened. He urgently needs to obtain more intelligence, and coming here is nothing but the best choice. Even if there is no news about the recovery magic, he can easily obtain Hutton's hiding place through his membership. Last night, Lal went to the slums. I originally thought that if Hutton was captured by the members of the Heart Fire Church, he would take this opportunity to attack those church members, rescue Hutton, and then force him to disclose the information he needed. However, the group of trash from the Heart Fire Church did not catch the old fox and instead allowed him to escape. Due to this incident, the civilian cave was also designated as a search area, and a large number of Holy Fire Knights conducted extensive searches in the civilian cave. But Hudaton's whole body seemed to evaporate out of thin air, and even with such a fierce search, there was still no discovery. These news have already spread in the ears of the masses, and besides, Lal was also a quite skilled explorer earlier. He immediately thought of the Union. There are not many people who can still get infected with the church and leave the whole body, but only a few who have the ability. However, Hutton is definitely not among them. This also indicates that there are other organizations behind that old boy. It must be people from the Seven Teachings and Four Societies who are helping, otherwise there is no reason why the Heart Fire Church cannot catch him. There are a total of seven mainstream churches in the world of Ezephalia. Setting aside other branches, after thousands of years of struggle, the three saints and four gods have emerged, which is something that every Ezephalian knows from a young age. The three holy cults refer to the three schools coexisting with the power of the royal court. Strictly speaking, the blessing of the holy light in the royal city can also be considered a belief. So, to be precise, adding the city of kings can divide it into four sacred religions. Believing in the power of radiance in the royal city, believing in the fire of the soul in the heart holy religion, believing in the power of nature in the earth holy religion, and believing in magic and magic in the moonlight holy religion. 
Compared to these four beliefs, the Four Gods cult is regarded as a cult by Wang Cheng. The painful theology of faith torture, the steel theology of faith curse, the past theology of faith death, and the impure blood theology. Whether it is a cult or a holy cult, they are all irresistible to join because of their blessed magic. These churches almost encompassed the entire population of Ezephalia, with countless believers in each denomination and even branch. Compared to the influence of the gods, the influence of the four societies is much smaller here in Azophasia, but their intelligence network is indeed the most powerful. The four associations are Explorer Association, Adventurer Union, Mage Association, and Business Union. The main tasks of explorers are to explore, draw maps, excavate artifacts, and collect and protect treasures. The Adventurer Guild has nothing to say, it just issues bounty commissions, completes missions, obtains corresponding revenge, and also has militia missions, obligated to participate in urban or local defense. The Mage Association is responsible for magic schools, specializing in the production and management of mages, managing libraries, and also tracking down some powerful magical users who act recklessly. Only wealthy people are born in commercial unions. As long as you have ambition, talent, wealth, and skills, you can become a member of the commercial union. These organizations are behemoths in Azerosha, and the people behind each organization can cover the sky with one hand. The resurrection magic is clearly a muddy water, and even discerning people know to hide far away, and Rawl knows it too. He understood how troublesome this matter was, but this time he didn't want to escape. Instead of dying meaningless, he was more willing to try to find the only hope in front of him. In this long wait, Lal finally welcomed the morning sunshine. He exhaled a cloud of air from his chest, squinted his eyes, and looked at the smoke coming out of the Explorers Association chimney. He shook off the snowflakes on his body and walked step by step into the newly opened Explorer Association on the slippery and cold snow road. Qingming outing and happy reading. Charge 100 and get 500 VIP coupons. Immediate recharge, activity period. April 4th to April 6th. Chapter 3 Explorer Association. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Yo! Rare guest, let me see who's here. As soon as Lal entered the hall of the Explorers Association, a bearded man greeted him with a teasing tone as if teasing an old acquaintance, shouting loudly at Lal. Isn't this our veteran Lal? Why did you wear a sword and armor today? Are you ready to re-enter the battle again? If that's the case, I would be happy to guide you on the latest relevant terms. Lal ignored the person's greeting directly. He hates this guy a bit now. Wide Wang, a typical alcoholic friend, is usually skilled at drinking and farting together. As long as you can provide free drinks, you can be your brother. If you can take him to prostitution, he can directly recognize you as his father. This person is the kind of trash friend who can't do big things well and can't help small things. Now that Lal was in trouble, he began to mock and ridicule, completely forgetting how much of his own wine he had drunk at the time. Lal walked over this guy and sat down at the counter on the other side, chatting with the beautiful female staff behind the counter. He didn't hesitate too much and directly stated his needs, saying, I need to investigate the news of a member. I have something important to hand over to him. The female staff member looked at Lal with a professional smile and said, Sure, sir, but you need to show your Explorer Association membership certificate first. Our survey service is only available for free to members within the association. Upon hearing this, Lal nodded and took out a silver medal from his waist pouch, handing it to the female staff member. This silver medal is made entirely of silver, about the size of a palm, with a small figure resembling a pathfinder painted on it. There are countless treasures around him. The female staff of the Explorers Association checked Lal's membership certificate and after confirming it was correct, they left their seats and hurriedly ran towards the attic upstairs. In no time, a female employee walked down the stairs with a middle-aged man, and they walked up to Lal. 
The middle-aged man immediately reached out his hand when he saw him and enthusiastically introduced himself, saying. Welcome, Mr. Lal. We are deeply honored that you have come to the Explorers Association. My name is Mars, and I am the current president of the Explorers Association in Andywell City. Nice to meet you. Lal also politely shook the other person's hand and briefly introduced himself, my name is Lal. Mars nodded and scanned the hall, seeing people entering the Explorer Association's hall one after another. He suggested, there will be a lot of people in the waiting hall, why don't we move to the reception hall and have a conversation? What do you think? My friend just brought two bottles of Igua wine a few days ago, and we can chat slowly there. Upon hearing this, Lal couldn't refuse either. Seeing that there was still alcohol to drink, he just agreed. In the second floor reception hall of the Explorers Association. The luxurious leather sofa seats, soft and reliable, combined with the unique red mesh and gold border decoration on the interior walls, greatly elevate the overall level of the room. Some ancient paintings with an indistinguishable era are mounted inside the house, accompanied by some fragrant plants as a backdrop. The young and beautiful maid held a large bottle of wine and placed two beautiful crystal wine glasses on the table. As he poured the wine, the crystal wine glasses gradually filled with brilliant red liquid. Smelling the fragrant scent, Lal picked up his glass and took a sip, feeling a surge of joy in his heart. He still remembers how ridiculous and comical the stunned expression on Widewang's idiot was when the president of the Explorers Association received him. Mars, seeing that Lal seemed to be in a good mood, took the opportunity to approach him and said, Mr. Lal, how does this wine taste? If you like it, why not give it to you when you leave later? Upon hearing this, Lal waved his hand and looked at Mars with some embarrassment. He found it difficult to speak and asked, Lauren, is she okay? Mars was also very happy to see Rawl mention his mother and immediately said. Very well, she has been missing you very much. Speaking as if Mars had thought of something, he then called the maid and asked her to bring a small box. When I took over the position of union president from her, my mother also instructed me to hand over this thing to you when you arrived here. Speaking, Mars delivered the small box to Rawl's hand. Lal looked at the settling box, then looked up at Mars, sighed, and finally returned the box to Mars. He knew what was inside the box, and he didn't want to accept the thing that had been kept for him for decades. Give this thing back to Lauren, I don't deserve it. After hearing this, Mars felt a bit embarrassed and quickly spoke up, but. My mother has told me. Lal stopped Mars from speaking with some displeasure and said, I'm ready to embark on the path of explorers again. Once you go, you may never come back here again. Leave the thing in your hand to Lauren for a moment of contemplation. I am well aware that I was sorry for her back then, but if there is a chance to make a new choice, I will still repeat the same mistake without hesitation. I can only apologize for Lauren. Mars knew about Rawl's relationship with his mother back then, but as a new generation, he couldn't make any further evaluations of the old generation's feelings, so he silently took back the heavy little box. What happened just now made both of them feel a bit awkward, but after finishing the drink, Lal was the first to speak up and break this strange atmosphere. He bluntly mentioned today's purpose and said. I'm here for the news of Hutton, I need to know where he is. Upon hearing this, Mars also felt a jolt in his heart, as he seemed to know Rawl's plan. At this moment, those who come to find that Tomb Raider are nothing more than news of resurrection magic. After all, Mars is the current president of the Explorer Association, and his ability to obtain information is naturally extraordinary. He didn't know where Law learned about this, but thinking about the crazy actions of those churches now, he couldn't help but worry about Law. People who rob things from the church usually don't have a good ending. With these thoughts in mind, Mars spoke to Rawl to persuade him, Hutton himself did not obtain the revival magic, he only found relevant literature in the ruins. Is it really necessary for you to take the risk of something that you don't know is true or false? Lal saw that Mars did know something, and even though he ignored his persuasion, he stood up excitedly as if he had found hope again. 
He shouted excitedly, I must go. I must find the magic of revival. Qin Ming outing and happy reading. Charge 100 and get 500 VIP coupons. Immediate recharge, activity period. April 4th to April 6th. Chapter 4 Bad News You are listening at NovelFull.audio Seeing Rawls' resolute attitude, Mars knew that no matter what he said, it was useless. Even if there was a vast abyss ahead at this moment, he probably would jump in without blinking an eye. People with determination always move forward without hesitation. They will not retreat or evade due to suffering or difficulties. They will only keep moving forward and break through all obstacles. Mars let out a sigh, and after some mental struggle, he still revealed the location of Hutton. Hutu Tun is now fleeing to the southern elderly, who are now part of the Orc tribe. Lol was a bit shocked when he heard this. He thought he had heard the wrong thing and was stunned for a while before he couldn't believe it and asked loudly. Where? Southern Advanced Age. Isn't that the tribal territory of the Sankey people? Mars nodded helplessly. Lar rolled his eyes wide at the sight, he had never seen anyone so foolish before. Sankey, originally a small and cute animal, they are very similar to cats, but not cats. They not only have a gentle personality, but also have big eyes. The fluffy hair all over Sankey's body made her whole face appear round. The triangular ears stand on the head and look silly, but they move quickly, with thick flesh pads on their limbs and feet. A big tail is also like a scarf. It can help them maintain balance when jumping from a high place. This kind of little thing is very sticky and enjoys interacting with humans. Usually, when I'm full, I either rub around with people or lie on the balcony, facing up in the sun. Their figures can be seen almost everywhere in Andy Will. This kind of creature not only has a cute appearance, but also captures insects and some small harmful animals. So many people keep them at home as pets. What is the Sankey tribe? In the elderly areas of the South, it has always been known as the Forbidden Zone for all men. It's a man's hell. In the entire Sankey tribe, which is elderly in the South, each tribe has nearly a thousand members, all of whom are females. They are no different from human women in appearance, even more beautiful, but they have ears and tails similar to those of Sanchi. This also adds a bit of temptation to these Sankaran. The most terrifying thing is that the Sankey tribe does not produce males. They often lure male travelers who pass by in order to reproduce, controlling them for mating and using them as tools to help them carry on their lineage. Sang Chiran has a very strong temperament, and their body fluids are accompanied by a strange fragrance, which also has the effect of keeping men excited. Not only that, they almost maintain the habits of their ancestors in that aspect of needs. They will take turns playing non-dot-stop, mating day and night without interruption. When human males arrive there, they become consumables completely, and usually there are not many people who can survive for more than three days under their repeated exploitation. When the explorers in Ezeferia first discovered the Sanchi tribe, they were not very familiar with this new race, and they only focused on seeing how beautiful these humanoid women were, without even noticing their danger. At that time, slave traders would specifically capture beautiful women with Sanchi ears and sell them to wealthy people for pleasure. But not long after, there were frequent cases of deaths caused by excessive mating. At this moment, people finally woke up and began to consciously respect these Sankey tribes. Nowadays, almost all the places where Sankey people can be seen in towns are cheap physical trading places. And it is listed as a prize challenge in the store. Later, scholars studied that even the extremely promiscuous goblin would not capture Sankaran as a mating partner. There is no other reason, it seems that Goblin is also very afraid of the Sanchi tribe. Furthermore, the Sankey tribe can only successfully reproduce offspring by mating with human males. Someone once sent Sankey tribe beauties into Goblin's cave for their own bad taste and sealed the entrance. A week later, when I went to see it, I found that the beautiful women of the Sankey tribe were still unharmed, 
while all the goblins died from excessive mating. Lal is very aware of the power of the Sankey tribe, and when he was young, he also unknowingly challenged the beautiful Sankey people with cute ears to stir fry. After a day and night of hard work, he also suffered a complete defeat like the former challenger. Lal thought about those bad memories, his mouth twitched, and he asked with great regret. If I depart now, isn't it too late? He felt a headache and asked Mars beside him for his thoughts. Upon hearing this, Mars also smiled bitterly and said. Who knows, but Hu Tutun probably doesn't have that fast speed either. It takes at least a month and a half to travel from here to the elderly in the south. When I received the news, he had just passed by the barren land and probably hasn't left yet. Lar nodded, got up, took his backpack, and was ready to leave the reception hall. Mars saw that he was about to leave, so he grabbed him and handed the previous small box to Rawl's hand, saying. You should take this thing. Holding the things in the box is very helpful for you on the way. As soon as Lal was about to refuse, Mars preemptively continued. I won't return your Silver Order Association badge to you. My mother will be very happy to receive it. After speaking, he left the reception hall without looking back looking like he had something important to deal with, without giving Rawl any chance to continue evading him. There were only two bottles of Igwa wine left in the room, along with Rawl, who was holding a box and daydreaming inside. Seeing no one in the room, Lal slowly opened the heavy small box. Inside is a golden explorer badge, along with several gold bars, and a string of pendants with magical portraits. Opening the lid, the magical pattern was lifelike, and it was clear that there was a young man with a resolute gaze in the pattern. Close to his chest was a handsome girl. Seeing the young self and Lauren in the photo, Lal couldn't help but shed tears. That is a feeling of guilt, a feeling of guilt for not being able to fulfill the promise. He took a deep breath and blinked hard, squeezing away the tears that blurred his vision. He received these things in his package and looked around the table. Lar glanced at the igwa wine on top and swallowed a mouthful of saliva as he looked at the sparkling drink. He really wanted to drink it. But he knew very well that he had developed an addiction to alcohol. But after a psychological struggle, Lal still didn't touch that thing. He turned his head and set off with unwavering determination. Rawl's first stop was the barren land. This is a must-pass thoroughfare that borders other parts of Andywell City, and the business union has almost expanded the entire road laying in the barren land. Walking on the main road, one can often see patrolling guards, which ensures that caravans can quickly and safely pass through the royal city in Andywell. But if you want to go to unexplored places like the elderly in the south, you need to take a detour away from the barren commercial roads, unless you can swim through the cracks separated by lava and cross the dangerous terrain of the heavenly abyss. Otherwise, you can only obediently risk heading towards the northern wilderness. Lar crossed the Wesson Chamber of Commerce and cautiously exchanged the gold bars for a large bag of silver coins at other banks. He brought this money all the way to the Call Beast transport station outside the city in a low dot key manner. At the entrance of each large urban area, there is its own post station, where core beasts and related supplies are sold for riding while also carrying out transportation and other related work matters. He came here to need a batch of his own coral beasts. The journey is far, how far can he walk with just his feet? Just as Lal was watching from the coal beast breeding shed, a little girl dressed as a farmer walked out of the house. She held a bundle of straw and saw that Lal seemed to be selecting coal beasts and didn't even have time to put them down. She greeted him warmly and introduced herself. Hello sir. Do you need me to show you around? These coal beasts are all good children. If you need to travel a long distance, why don't you come with me to the breeding shed inside to choose? There are all our treasures there. However, the price may be slightly higher. The little girl playfully blinked her eyes, and he held the straw that was ready to feed the coal beast, looking at Rawl with a smile as he waited for his reply. Qingming outing and happy reading. Charge 100 and get 500 VIP coupons. 
Immediate Recharge, Activity Period April 4th to April 6th Chapter 5 Coal Beast You are listening at NovelFull.audio Faced with the little girl's expectant gaze, Lal couldn't bear to refuse, even though he wanted to pick one at will. Let's go, take me inside and take a look. Lal looked at the different postures of the coal beasts outside the animal pen, sighed, and reluctantly accepted the little girl's proposal. Okay. Handsome sir. Please come with me. After hearing this, the little girl's face immediately burst into a smile. She put down the straw in her hand, hummed a song with joy, and jumped forward to guide Rawl. As the little girl led her through the small courtyard of the transportation station and arrived at the enclosure of the coal beasts, Lal was also impressed by the robust coal beasts. He had never seen such a high dot quality breed before. Even when he was still a veteran, the coal beasts that supplied the troops were not as excellent as half of the ones in civilian animal pens today. Just thinking about it, Rawl realized that it was the pace of the times that set him aside as an old antique. Lar is not entangled in these matters. He walked excitedly in the animal pen, caressing the heads of these wild beasts, observing their postures and characteristics. They are tall and sturdy, with strong and sturdy limbs. The thick skin on their heads looks like scales, and their huge tails sweep and sweep, even bringing up the surrounding sand. Their nostrils exhale hot air with a roaring roar, so powerful and deafening. Until his eyes flickered around, Lal still hadn't made up his mind which coal beast to choose as his companion on the road. Lar really likes it. He is very fond of every coal beast. The little girl didn't rush to urge Lal, but patiently followed him. I am very satisfied with the little girl in front of me. From the love in Lar's eyes, it can be seen that he will definitely be a good host in the future. Lal chose a brown coral beast, not because of it, but because the lightning-shaped scar on its head was too eye-dot catching. Lal felt that he was special, as if someone was guiding him in the dark, so Lal gave it a strange name, Harry, in the end, the transaction was made for 390 Royal City Silver Coins, and the little girl also made the decision for his webmaster father, giving Lar a set of coal beast saddles and leather armor, as well as a matching backpack and a cleaning brush for bathing coal beast. The coal beast is a herbivorous animal, so it does not need to carry forage. As long as it is not too harsh, it can be self-sufficient. However, it should be noted that it also requires drinking water, so when you rest, try to choose a place with a water source. The little girl looked at Lar, who had already ridden the coal beast, pinching his waist and still reminding him of the relevant precautions. Lar happily stroked the coal beast's back and joked to the little girl in a good mood, I am an old soldier, so these basic things are naturally clear. How old are you? Why are you like a little adult? The little girl snorted at Lal in anger and said, Humph. I'm already twelve years old, and I'll get married in two more years. Lar laughed heartily and said optimistically, Okay. I see you must be a good wife in the future. If my son is still alive, I must have him come and propose to you. Let's go. The little girl lowered her head and twisted her cheeks, blushing with embarrassment upon hearing the words. After a while, she regained her senses and was about to give Rawl some more advice. However, when she looked up, she saw that Rawl had already flown away on the coal beast. The coal beast bears the main responsibility for land transportation in Azerosha, and 90% of its cargo transportation is carried out by people riding coal beasts. During the early Azerotic Wars, the coal beast also served as a combat mount for the army, which was not allowed to be bought or acquired by the people. At that time, a heart flame paladin and a heavily armored coal beast could achieve the effect of dispersing the enemy's formation in a camp of thousands of people. The coal beast is incredibly powerful and can carry several tons of cargo. Its skin is rough and its flesh is thick, making it difficult for ordinary swords to harm it. It also protects the humans it interacts with day and night. However, if provoked, the coal beast will instantly transform into a violent heavy weapon, crushing all obstacles in front of it until it is exhausted. 
Coal beasts are very powerful, but they have a fatal flaw on the battlefield, which is that they will never attack their own kind. If the opponent also rides the coal beast to play against it, the two coal beasts will avoid it on their own, even if the rider drives it, it is useless. In the end, this powerful land mount was eliminated by the royal city for civilian transportation, while on the battlefield it was replaced with the more violent creature, Magic Beast, even though their overall abilities may not be as good as those of the Coal Beast, those four-legged monsters with pitch-black horns on their heads will charge forward regardless of their lives. Anyway, Lol did not catch up with those monster-like mounts. Before the elimination of the Coal Beast, he left the army and began his adventure as an explorer. Map, map. Hiss. Didn't this old boy Hututun go to the northern wilderness? At this moment, the sky had already darkened, and Lolf stopped by a small stream to start a fire. The coal beast was hoarding water by the river, drinking heavily, while he frowned and looked at the small red dots on the map that marked the monster settlements. Going further into the northern wilderness is the territory of the wild boar people, and those semi-civilized monsters are followers of the Iron God religion, making them a difficult group to deal with. As this is their territory, there is no need to say much about their numbers. The problem is that Hutton probably didn't have accompanying guards. How did he pass through this batch of areas? Is the front rigid? Lol shook his head as he thought it was impossible. But soon he thought of Hutton's old business. Dungeon. Years of experience as an explorer have taught Rawl that many underground caves are mostly interconnected. Once upon a time, he also sneaked into a cave in the Pioneer Mountains with several comrades in arms to avoid being hunted down by pursuers. When he came out, he had already arrived at the Northern Duchy. Recalling the past, Lol felt that his judgment was likely correct. As the light of the campfire continued to shine, the markings on the map marked caves and cemeteries began to appear. Batten's Frosted Tomb Seeing the terrain closely attached to the mountain ring on the map, Lol became more certain of his thoughts. Isn't this a place that was only discovered this year? Why is it still an unexplored area? Lar widened his eyes in disbelief and brought the map closer to the campfire, but it was still a grey marker. Lar laid out the wrinkled map in his hand on the ground, unfolded the entire chapter, and was surprised to see the densely marked grey relics of all sizes. I am very disappointed again. After a long time, he let out a sigh and cursed with some resentment. What has the Explorer Association been doing in recent years? His grandmother's, Mars, that little devil really doesn't give his mother credit. Humph. Qingming outing and happy reading. Charge 100 and get 500 VIP coupons. Immediate recharge, activity period. April 4th to April 6th. Chapter 6. Dogs can't change to eat shit. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Lol angrily put away the map on the ground and sat down on the ground. He looked at the cold beast, who also looked at him curiously. One person, one beast, just staring at each other in such a boring way. Remembering the countless unexplored lands and the lingering anger made Rawl want to drink again. The wine worms in his stomach seemed to scratch his heart and liver, making him uncomfortable. But where did he go to get that thing in the wilderness now? Lol felt a bit regretful at this moment, regretting why he didn't bring the two bottles of Igwa wine that Mars had given him. But at this moment, he had a sudden idea and immediately turned his attention to the wild boar tribe. The population of wild boar people, located between monsters and humans, belongs to the orc tribe. Orcs do not belong to any power, they do not communicate with human language, but they can obtain the power of blessings through faith. As long as they do not interfere or cross over, orcs rarely attack humans. At this moment, Lol was planning to provoke them. Obviously, this is not a good idea. But for the sake of wine, Lol can't care so much anymore. As soon as the coral beast lay on the ground ready to rest, Lol pulled the reins and jumped onto his back. Lol took out his silver sword and loudly shouted the command to move forward. With a shake of the reins, the coral beast, who had received the command, 
roared and stood up, like a gust of wind, running towards the target pointed by Lal with an unstoppable momentum. Lal's destination is a small tribe of wild boar people, and once it is destroyed, he can obtain abundant supplies. Each race has their own dietary habits, but they are all similar. Thinking of this, Lal even misses the taste of the wild boar man's specially brewed wine. In this quiet night, the noise caused by the heavy body of the coal beast as it ran could not be concealed, and Rawl's movements were quickly detected by the wild boar people. They shouted strange language loudly and crawled out of their adobe house. A wild boar shaman muttered a fierce spell and threw a scorching white magic ball into the air. Riding on the coal beast, Lal's reaction speed was also extremely fast. As soon as the light ball took off, a silver dagger appeared in Lal's hand. His body was tilted at an angle, and with a slight force, he threw the dagger towards the light ball. Seeing that the magical light ball had not yet played its role, it was hit by a silver dagger and then disintegrated in the air. Any mage poses an extremely deadly threat to a warrior, just like the current Lal. Just this little counterattack did not have any impact on Lal's charge, and did not even stop for a second. The wild boar shaman was also anxious when he saw Lal rushing towards him, even when he was ready to cast a blessing spell. But Lal didn't give him a chance, and without hesitation, he threw away the silver sword he was holding tightly in his hand. The sword's body spun with tremendous inertia and directly pierced the chest of the wild boar shaman. At this moment, the wild boar tribe became chaotic. Their tribal leader has obviously been taken down by Lao. But at this moment, the charge of the coal beast did not stop. Its massive body, with its destructive power, crashed and crushed the wild boar people who were fleeing hurriedly. Riding on Harry's back, Lal pulled the reins to one side, and the hard head of the coal beast, with its blunt horns and scales, swiftly swept towards the side like a heavy hammer. A wild boar man who had just picked up his weapon and greeted him was directly knocked upside down and flew out. Watching the blood mist flying all over the sky, Lal, with the help of a moment's pause from the Kodo beast, leaned forward and pulled out the silver sword inserted into the body of the fallen wild boar man shaman. With a sudden flick. With a buzzing sound. The blade shook rapidly, and the blood still attached to the blade was bounced away by the vibration. The silver sword, which was still stained with blood, now revealed its dazzling silver luster. Rawl jumped off his coral beast Harry's back, walking on a muddy road soaked in blood as if nothing had happened. With a single-handed sword tied around his waist, he naturally broke into the Borman's mud house. Now, Lal has nothing in his eyes except for wine. He quickly searched through this small tribe for useful things, and whatever he could take away, he would immediately bring it up and put it in Harry's bag, the coral beast. In just a moment, Lal completed the search. He joyfully carried a bottle of bright yellow liquid, opened the cork of the bottle, and couldn't help but feel a wave of relief when he smelled the fragrant and familiar taste. Ha! <laughs> it's great! The wild boar man's Muir banana honey wine is really amazing. Why can't those brewers in the royal city make this thing? Lal paid no attention to the corpses on the ground and the pungent smell of blood. He held the wine and looked up at the bottle before taking a big sip. The alcohol dissolved in his mouth with a slight sweetness and fragrance, instantly making Rawl feel a bit comfortable and floating. I took a few big sips in succession. Lal, feeling slightly intoxicated, closed the bottle with a stopper. Hee hee, I really can't change how dogs eat shit. Rawl, who had regained his sanity, looked at the golden wine in the bottle and chuckled bitterly, but he still put the few bottles of Musa honey into Harry's backpack. Rawl really made up his mind to quit drinking this time, but the pain of a withdrawal was clearly not something he could bear. He needs to give himself time. Lar kicked away the corpse of the wild boar man blocking the way in front of him, and slowly walked towards his own coal beast, observing the surrounding environment. Lar flipped over and climbed onto the coal beast's back, turned the reins, and pointed the coal beast towards the riverbank where the campfire was rising. The fog had not yet dissipated in the early morning of the second day, but by this time, 
Lal was completely awake and time had become increasingly urgent. He had to find Hutton before he was found by the church forces. Even if not intercepted by the church, Hutu Tun will inevitably be captured by the Sanchi tribe once he reaches his advanced age in the south. As long as Hutton makes any mistakes, he will lose all clues and lose motivation, transforming back into the annoying bug that everyone despises. With a melancholic mood, Lal got up and came to the riverbank. He buried his head in the cool river water. At this point, he needs to be clear-headed. He needs to clean his body of dirt and all bad habits. As the sun rose, the mist in the wilderness dissipated. Rawl, who had regained his spirits, rode his beloved coral beast Harry towards Batten's frosted tomb. Exploring tombs in Azerosha is a very dangerous thing, usually requiring at least silver level or above explorers or adventurers to team up with no less than three people to be competent. In addition to ancient magical traps, there are also some monsters that are not revealed in the world to guard the tombs. Usually, these tombs serve as communication boards for the Explorers Association or the Adventurers Union, and are publicly disclosed to adventurers. Qingming outing and happy reading. Charge 100 and get 500 VIP coupons. Immediate recharge, activity period. April 4th to April 6th. Chapter 7 The Frosted Tomb of Batten. You are listening at novelfull.audio. In theory, these tombs should be fully controlled by local associations and unions, but this is not the case. This is also the reason why Rawl has such an atmosphere. What Lal didn't know was that explorers and adventurers had already become scarce in today's world of Azerosha. A few years ago, on a certain day, Wangqing launched a massive recall of powerful adventurers and explorers from all walks of life, with the silver rank as the minimum limit. This time, the royal city is also quite generous, promising that anyone who completes the task can receive a generous reward of 100,000 gold and can obtain the status of bishop. After the death of the king today, they can inherit the next king of Azerosha. The huge reward made everyone red-eyed at the time, and without understanding, a large number of people came to the royal city one after another to report. But when they learned that they were going to explore the Tower of Heaven, everyone was dumbfounded. The metal tower that runs through seven worlds has never seen a second person returning from it, except for the first king. With the help of a large number of people, there were voices of opposition at that time. Some people wanted to back down, but without exception, they were all charged with treason and sentenced to death row. Some people want to rebel, but how could the four great bishops tolerate it? Under coercion and temptation, these people were all sent into the Tower of Heaven. A few years later, to the present day of Lao, no one has survived from the Tower of Heaven. The exploratory power of Ezephalsia declined in this event. As for the remaining explorers and adventurers, they are either newcomers or garbage. Without the guidance of the old bird, the growth rate of these people can be imagined. Many newcomers do not receive shelter, and they can only rely on themselves, so just maintaining their survival rate has already made the two conferences anxious. Of course, there are also some powerful explorers and adventurers on the continent of Azerosha who have survived, but they are either reclusive hermits, some ghostly scholars, some business tycoons who do not love money and fame, or scoundrels like Lal who have no friends. Hills, ponds, wild boar settlements, giant tree landmarks. Lal compared and confirmed the surrounding environment on the map. Great. I found it. Lal, sitting on the back of the coal beast, put away the map and pulled the reins, leading Harry towards a direction. In just a moment, a collapsed large hole appeared before Rawl's eyes. The current Explorer Association has discovered this type of underground cave entrance and doesn't know how to set up a flagpole around it. It's really hard for me to find it. Is there no one left in his grandmother's association or union now? Lar jumped off the back of the coal beast, spat a mouthful of foam, still cursing at the Explorer Association in displeasure. He really doesn't know that their association and union are really empty. Following his usual good style, Lal wielded his sword and cut a tree around him. 
He then used a brightly colored cloth found in the wild boar tribe to make a mark and tied it to the processed wooden stake. He simply dug a hole and with one force, he inserted it into the ground. Looking at the flagpole fluttering in the wind, Lal smiled with satisfaction. He patted the non-dot-existent dust on his hands, took out the magic lamp from his bag, and led Harry into the bottomless tomb. The tomb is very spacious, and it can be said that as you walk deeper, the larger the ceiling, the higher it rises. The stone steps are arranged side by side in an orderly manner, and its width can accommodate at least three coal beasts passing side by side. The most incomprehensible thing is the drainage system of the tomb passage, which is very dry and has no signs of being soaked in water. But looking at the traces of the stairs at the entrance of the cave, it is obvious that even under the exposure of sunlight, it has not only passed for a few days, but may also take two to three years. Although there is not much rainfall here in the northern wilderness, there will still be continuous heavy rain during the changing seasons, so there is no reason not to be submerged here. While admiring the wisdom of the ancients, Lal also carefully guarded his surroundings. As a qualified adventurer, one must prioritize their own life safety. With a trace sound, Lal instantly pulled out his silver sword from his waist, his ears moving slightly, carefully listening to the sound coming from deep inside the tomb. Bang 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 dun dun, bang lang. Chung chung. Lar furrowed his brow and analyzed the source of these sounds. Seems to be in battle. Someone. And ghostly ghosts. Lar promised that he wouldn't hear it wrong, that's the sound of the sharp blade slashing at those monsters. Monsters like zombies almost always have a texture like dried meat, and it is generally difficult to kill them if the weapons are relatively light. 80% of those who can get into a tough battle with just a few zombies are professions like assassins. With this thought in mind, Lal decided to mount the coal beast again and quickly ran in that direction by pulling the reins. Ka Leng. The walls suddenly sunken, and a large beam of blue dazzling light sprayed out with strong kinetic energy. The location where this spell was emitted happened to be the blind spot behind Lal. But at this moment, the power of the gold medal adventure was evident, and Lal had already caught the faint sound of movement. Lal knew that the rapid attack of the coal beast on the trail of this underground tomb would inevitably trigger certain mechanisms, and he was also prepared for this. Just as the rain suddenly lifted with force, Harry also understood Rawl's meaning with a sharp sense and jumped out before the next step was lifted. The dazzling blue light almost brushed past Rawl's body, but he continued to control Harry to run forward without even looking. Oh, 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 oh. The big monster has appeared. Lal shouted loudly and deliberately reminded the person in front of him who was fighting. At this moment, below the inner passage of the tomb, Assassin Wayne is desperately fighting back against the five surrounding ghostly corpses in front of him. He bent down and crawled under the crotch of a ghostly creature, cutting off its tendons. If it were an ordinary human, it would have lost its combat power, but at this point, his target was a ghostly creature. When dealing with zombies, his moves are clearly not as fast and efficient as when dealing with humans. Even Ven is skilled, every blow can hit their throat, heart, spine, and even damage their brains. But the actual effect is almost negligible. There is no such thing as a crucial point about this undead creature. As long as their bodies are still able to move, they will resolutely attack the creatures in front of them. Wayne was also numbed by these monsters, and he regretted it very much. If heaven gave him another chance, he would definitely swear to heaven and never explore alone in tombs with undead creatures in the future. Just as he was filled with mixed emotions and regret, a joyful shout came from the distant staircase, accompanied by a heavy roar. Get out of here! Get out of here, everyone! The loud shouting gradually approached. A huge coal beast flew out of the stepped walkway carrying Lao. Qin Ming outing and happy reading. Charge 100 and get 500 VIP coupons. Immediate recharge, activity period. April 4th to April 6th. Chapter 8 Intentional Fault Finding. You are listening at novelfull.audio. 
Wayne was originally an assassin, and his reaction speed was extremely fast. He dodged to the side when he saw Lol appear. On Lol's side, the galloping coal beast was like a giant shell, carrying a powerful destructive impact and knocking over every ghoul present. Under the massive size of the coal beast, the already fragile body of the ghostly creature was like a pancake, making a crisp sound when touched. Even if a ghostly creature struggled to get up, Lol would mercilessly pull out his silver sword and insert it into its head. When the silver sword pierces into the body of the corpse and is pulled out, it will bring out a bundle of blue souls and pull them out of the withered body. The ghost also fell to the ground in response. I cleaned up five zombies in a row with a crisp and neat approach, completing them all in just thirty seconds. Wayne looked at the person in front of him with an incredulous expression on his face. He quickly put away his weapon and greeted Lal, who had jumped off the coral beast, with a friendly attitude. Thank you, my friend. If it weren't for your help, I might have fallen here today. My name is Wayne Sterling. Upon hearing this, Lal turned his gaze to Wayne. He hugged his chest with both hands and touched it, then asked thoughtfully, Do you come from the Sterling family? Do you know Reed Sterling? Upon hearing this, Wayne was greatly surprised and said, Do you know my uncle? When Lal saw his expression, he immediately laughed and walked over to Pat Wayne's shoulder. He laughed and said, Ha ha ha, not only do we know each other, but he and I, Lal, are classmates and friends. So, how is your uncle doing now? Upon hearing Rawl ask about his uncle, Wayne said with a somewhat unpleasant expression, I passed away from illness in the past two years. After hearing these words, Lal felt very pleased in his heart, but on the surface, he pretended to be surprised and loudly said, that old man Reed borrowed two hundred gold coins from me back then, but he hasn't returned them to me yet. As he spoke, Rawl fixed his gaze firmly on Wayne's eyes again. The aura of cannibalism frightened Wayne into practicing and retreating. Before Wayne could say anything, Rawl continued, it's really a pity to die. Upon hearing what Lal said, Wayne breathed a sigh of relief and nodded in agreement. But before his heart could completely let go, Rawl said, well, since the elder has died, then let your younger generation repay this money. Lar spoke lightly, but the meaning behind his words is beyond doubt. Wayne asked Lal awkwardly, Uncle Lal, isn't this good? Upon hearing this, Lal's eyes widened and his nostrils grew big. With an angry expression, he retorted, what's wrong? Shouldn't we just repay the money we owe? Wayne was speechless, he didn't expect Rawl to be so rogue. He never heard of anyone in his family having any external debts, and besides, Sterling's family is wealthy, and generally no one goes around borrowing money, which is completely unnecessary. What Wayne didn't know was that R.A. and his uncle didn't actually have much interaction. He borrowed 200 gold coins from Reed and still hasn't paid them back, which is true. That's because Reed is kind. Seeing that R.A. is poor, he thought this account would be settled. However, who would have expected that R.A., who had learned about Reed's death after his death, would use this news to trap his descendants? If Reed had learned about this, he would probably have crawled out of the coffin in anger now. Wayne looked at Lal in front of him and felt a bit troubled, but if he didn't give an explanation now, Lal would definitely not give up on this matter. In a moment of thought, Wayne had a sudden idea and remembered the box of good things he had received before. Without hesitation, he rummaged through his backpack and found a small box of sediment, stuffing it into Lal's hand. Uncle Lal, Take a look at the jewelry and coin jewelry in the box. It should be enough to offset my uncle's debt, right? After hearing this, Lal glanced at Wayne and carefully opened the precipitated box in his hand. In his eyes was a whole box of dazzling jewelry, gold coins, pearl necklaces, and colorful gemstones. These priceless jewels are almost packed to the brim of the entire small box. Lal just glanced at what was inside and closed the lid of the box, throwing it back into Wayne's arms in frustration. After receiving the box, Wayne was also very panicked. He didn't think that Lal's conscience had discovered it, it must have been the other party who had discovered his methods. 
As expected by Wayne, Rawl looked disdainfully at him and cursed, Sterling's little boy, I advise you to be honest, otherwise I will teach you a lesson for your uncle, this ignorant guy. Wayne was also scared by the pull. He really didn't expect Rawl to be so powerful, he just recognized the problem with the jewelry at a glance. He dared not show off his cleverness anymore, so he immediately bowed and apologized to Rawl, I'm sorry, Uncle Rawl. I will definitely return your coins one by one. That's what Lar was waiting for. Seeing Wayne subdued, Lal put away his wicked face and asked him the reason why Wayne came here, like an ordinary adventurer's conversation. Wayne was drunk, and it was the first time in his life that he had seen someone who flipped his face faster than a book, but he still patiently talked to Rawl. I have just been promoted to the silver level, and this exploration can be said to be my first communication board task. I have not entered this type of tomb before, so I am not fully prepared. Uncle Lal, you have also seen the situation. Just as we arrived here, we were caught off guard by a few ghostly attacks. Lar joked on Wayne's shoulder and said, Your contemporary adventurers have varying levels of strength. Back then, tombs like this were places where young men and women would meet and fight. Look at you, what a mess. Upon hearing Lal's words, Wayne became somewhat angry and shook his hand, saying, I am a professional assassin. My profession is killing. It's assassination. It's not chopping these tough jerky meat. Lar also showed a surprised expression when he saw Wayne. He took two steps back and said with a mischievous smile, the young man has quite a temper. Young people, how can you call them, young people, if you don't have strong willpower, but you need to have the ability to match your temper. Come on, let me try your skills. As he spoke, Lal pulled out his silver sword and held it up in front of him, while speaking incoherently. If you win against me, then the debt of two hundred gold coins will be waived. But if you lose, then double the reward. Wayne was also holding fire in his heart. As soon as Lal appeared, he was very aggressive. Although the two of them didn't know each other before, he let himself carry some inexplicable debt. It's okay, but now he's starting to question his own strength. Obviously, Wayne is not made of clay either. Immediately, he was also prepared and accepted Rawl's proposal, confronting him in front of him. Qing Ming outing and happy reading. Charge 100 and get 500 VIP coupons. Immediate recharge, activity period. April 4th to April 6th. Chapter 9. Inferiority. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Look at the move. Backhand cross cut throat. Rawl swept out with a sword upon hearing the shout, Wayne quickly dodged, but even with his improved speed, he dodged quite awkwardly, with the tip of his sword almost brushing against Wayne's throat. If Lar hadn't shouted out his skills at the time and had given Wayne advanced knowledge of the moves, it was estimated that a face dot to dot face encounter would have been killed by Lar. Wayne was also quite shocked. What was the speed of the middle dot aged man in front of him? It's so strong, it's a bit outrageous. Now he had no intention of daydreaming anymore. Seeing Lal's movements coherent and seamless, each move without any dragging or dragging. He must bring up the spirit of twelve cents. Unfortunately, Lal didn't give him a chance at all, and when Wayne's body had not yet stabilized, Lal resorted to another move. Second transverse incision to break the abdomen. The move followed the sound, and the silver sword deflected in mid-air, attacking his abdomen at a very tricky angle. Wayne didn't have time to make any new moves, so he gritted his teeth and sweated profusely, driving a dagger to block it. But to his surprise, Lal suddenly changed his position and with one hand pressing, he grabbed one of his daggers. Backhand lifting and wrist cutting. Lal shouted out the move and was about to take the corresponding action, which frightened Wayne and quickly gave up the weapon in his hand. Busy is just a back jump. Just as he was about to distance himself and retreat, Lal seemed to have predicted his prediction, relentlessly chasing after him. Pierced through the heart. Lars' deadly skill broadcast is here again. At the moment Wayne saw the tip of his sword poking towards him, he knew he had lost. 
He had no strength to fight back against Rawl, even if the opponent intentionally let out water and shouted his own move before launching the attack. Wayne was convinced of his defeat, and his skills were inferior to others. Even if he was killed on the spot, he had no complaints. In the world of Azerosha, if there is a duel between two sides, even if they kill each other, they do not need to take any responsibility, and the defeated often have to pay the price of their lives. Wayne knows this rule and he also strongly agrees with the theory of survival of the fittest. He closed his eyes and waited for the sword tip to pierce his chest. But what he was waiting for was a big foot that kicked him away. With a splash. Wayne fell to the ground. He looked at Rawl with a puzzled expression on his face, as if he was looking at something strange. Upon seeing this, Lal also reluctantly put away his sword and said somewhat displeased. Take a look at the young people nowadays. As long as the dishes are ready, it's not enough for others to say a few words. For Wayne's strange gaze, Lal rolled his eyes and said angrily. What are you looking at? Don't look at me like that. If you're dead, who will I ask for money from? Agreed. You can't lose a penny of 400 gold coins. Looking at Lars' performance in front of him, Wayne understood that the guy standing in front of him now had no honor at all. Even his assassin, who doesn't care about honor at all, can't bear it anymore. You must be very pitiful, right? Wayne muttered unintentionally. Wayne's voice was very low, but Lal still keenly felt that Wayne seemed to be speaking ill of him, and when he asked back. What are you saying? No. Wayne vehemently denied it. I just heard it all. Absolutely not. Lal and Wayne have four eyes facing each other. After watching for a while, Lal finally gave up and waved his hand to stop being angry with the young man in front of him. But just as he turned his head, he remembered something and turned back, saying, The money you owe me. Wayne interrupted before Lal finished speaking. I will definitely give it back to you. Four hundred gold coins, not a single one will be missing. Actually, Lal wanted to say, you don't need to pay me back the money you owe me. But he didn't expect this guy to treat him like a scoundrel and bump into him before he could even speak up. This kid is still too young. Lal muttered softly, pulling up Harry's reins, ready to continue searching for the shortcut that runs through the tomb. He hasn't had such a refreshing feeling in a long time. Using money as a pretext, the young assassin repeatedly suffered, and just thinking of Wayne's miserable expression made Lal burst into laughter. Being able to bully these so-called newcomers makes him very happy. This is a rare pleasure. Lar hummed a strange out-of-tune song, happily strode forward, but before he took two steps, he saw an extra tail following behind him. He knew who was following behind him, and seeing this, Lal also felt a little disgusted. He suddenly turned his head and stared at Wayne. He walked over and poked the armor on his chest with his fingers, asking. Don't you need to clear the tomb anymore? What are you doing with me? I don't know how to take care of children. Lar was completely indifferent to Wayne's feelings, and Wayne was also pointed out by Lar as a bit uncomfortable. He leaned over and retreated to avoid it. At the same time, he said. Uncle Lal, come on, I still have to pay you back. Are you not afraid that I'll run away and hide? Wayne seems to have adapted to Lal's tone of voice, he is very polite and respectful when speaking. Even if you don't adapt, there's nothing you can do. Alphacia is already a world where the strong are respected. But after seeing Lal's strength, he also had his own ideas. When Wayne saw that Lal didn't speak, he immediately received, Uncle Lal, why don't we form a team? The two of us can definitely explore here quickly. Lar frowned at the words. He was just joking around with this guy, and Lal never expected this little assassin to dare to find him. Not to mention anything else, there are not many people who can have such measurements alone. Lal couldn't help but glance at Wayne Gao. Lar is very self-aware of what kind of jerk he is. Evil, barbaric, drunken, vulgar, vulgar in short, Lal has very few friends. 
there are very few people who can catch his eye. Now, inexplicably, I have developed a slight liking for this newcomer, perhaps because my son is just his age Lar shook his head, put aside those unrealistic fantasies, and looked at Wayne pondering, do you have to go? Why don't you go home now and start a team of at least five people to challenge again? It's not too late. Lar was well-intentioned and didn't want this stunned young man to lose his life, but to his surprise, Wayne didn't appreciate it. He said emotionally, I must prove myself. I want to tell those old folks in the family that I have the ability to take this path. I don't have much time left. If I cannot obtain the slow gem in this tomb in early spring, I must obediently give up my adventurer status and return to that family that I detest to inherit the damn position of head. At this point, Wayne showed a face full of frustration. Lar didn't understand Wayne's ideas very well. Enjoying glory, wealth, and prosperity, surrounded by beautiful women, having no worries about food and drink, and having enough wine and meat. What's wrong with this kind of life? Lar is not from a wealthy background, and he has no idea about the various doors and channels inside. Even he has always envied the luxurious life of the aristocratic domain lords in the royal city. But when Lal looked at Wayne's determined gaze, he was moved. He decided to help this young assassin. Qin Ming outing and happy reading. Charge 100 and get 500 VIP coupons. Immediate recharge, activity period. April 4th to April 6th. 